Hey there, I've got a serious question for you. If I could hand you a prescription, no side effects, no pharmacy, completely free, that could cut your risk of cancer by about almost 40%, would you take it? It's not a pill, it's not some secret supplement, it's something you already know how to do, but probably aren't doing enough of. And in 2025, we finally have the science to prove just how powerful it is. The prescription is exercise. Yeah, exercise. Not just for weight loss, not just for heart health. I'm talking about real clinical impact on cancer recurrence. A new randomized controlled trial just published in the New England Journal of Medicine shows us exactly how movement can keep stage three colon cancer from coming back. That's metastatic colon cancer. Let's break it down what the study actually found, why it works, and how you can use it to stack the odds in your favor starting today. So here's the deal. This was a clinical trial, not a blog post, not some mouse study, not something the lady at the candy store told you. Researchers followed 899 people with stage three colon cancer. Everyone had surgery and chemo. Then they were split into two groups. One group got the usual advice, eat better, move more, run along. The other group got structure, a real exercise plan with coaching, accountability, and movement tailored to their fitness levels. What happened? After five years, the structured exercise group had 28% lower risk of their cancer coming back. By year eight, that number grew to 37% lower recurrence. That is wild. Better outcomes than some chemo drugs, just from getting consistent, moderate exercise. And before you picture Ironman training or boot camps, think again. Most participants walked, did light strength training. A few even kayaked or did cross-country skiing. But the point was consistency and not intensity. Simple, sustainable movement done regularly was enough to change lives. Now, you might be wondering, how does walking three times a week reduce cancer recurrence? This isn't some magic potion. This is actually biology. Let me show you what exercise actually does inside your body. Number one, it lowers inflammation. Cancer thrives in inflamed environments. Exercise dials down systemic inflammation and helps your immune system focus on the real threats. Number two, Exercise improves insulin sensitivity. High insulin levels have been linked to tumor growth. Exercise stabilizes your blood sugar and reduces insulin spikes, cutting off one of cancer's fuel lines. Number three, exercise boosts immune surveillance. Your immune system is actually the bouncers of the club of your body. And movement makes it stronger, sharper, and better at spotting rogue cancer cells before they tear the club up and cause some trouble. Number four, Exercise regulates hormones. This is especially key for breast and prostate cancers. Exercise helps balance estrogen, testosterone, and cortisol, keeping your internal chemistry more stable and less cancer friendly. And number five, exercise improves gut health. The gut is home to your second brain and a major player in immune function. Exercise diversifies your microbiome and reduces cancer-linked toxins in the gut. So no, this isn't about feeling better Every step you take sends a message to your cells. We are not done fighting. So, okay, let's take all this information and let's make it real. Here's how to build a sustainable science-backed movement plan. Step one, start small and safe. If you're recovering from treatment, start with 10 minute walks after meals. It's gentle on the body and powerful for your metabolism at the same time, but always check in with your care team first. Step number two is to build up to 150 minutes a week, minimum. And that's 30 minutes five times uh, a week, five days a week, walking, biking, dancing, whatever gets your heart rate up, you should be able to talk, but not sing while you're doing it. And step number three, add strength training two to three times a week. This doesn't mean bodybuilding. Use light weights, bands, or even body weight movements. Strength training supports your metabolism, immune health, and recovery. Step number four, remember to make it fun and social. Join a walking group, sign up for a low impact dance class. Movement is medicine, but it's easier to stick with it when it feels like play and it's social. Step number five, track your progress, not perfection. Use a journal or an app to log what you're doing. Don't chase burnout, chase consistency and progress. 
as you go. So you want to level up even more. Looking for a bonus here. Okay, um, combine your exercise routine with a plant-based high fiber diet. That means more beans, lentils, berries, leafy greens, more garlic, turmeric, and green tea. Uh, try fewer ultra processed foods. That's always going to be my recommendation and added sugars. Don't do that. Plants feed your gut bi microbiome and fiber helps your, your body eliminate hormone metabolites linked to recurrence. And antioxidants, they're your cellular cleanup crew if you wanna add that. This isn't a crash diet, it's a long-term cancer fighting upgrade. So here's the bottom line. We used to think cancer recovery was just about surgery, chemo, and luck actually. Now we know better. Lifestyle changes matter a lot. And exercise isn't just nice to have, it's a legitimate evidence-based intervention that can help keep cancer from coming back. So don't wait for perfect. Start with a walk. Start with movement that feels doable. And if you want help building real habits, not just hearing about them, check out my lifestyle modification community. It's a private support group led by me and my team with live coaching calls, nutrition breakdowns, and the kind of accountability that actually helps you follow through. Check out the links in the description below. Stay healthy, stay informed, and I will see you soon.